Hey there, welcome to Pepper Geek. In today's video, I'll go through seven of the very best non-spicy pepper varieties for you to try growing. So if you're familiar with our channel, you know that we grow a wide variety of different pepper varieties, but I do feel like we might focus more on spicy varieties than non-spicy or sweet peppers. So I thought we could dedicate a video specifically to sweet peppers. Okay, jumping right in, let's get the obvious out of the way. Bell peppers, they are the king of sweet pepper varieties. They're very large, they have nice thick walls, perfect for stuffing or roasting or slicing and eating fresh. And yes, you can grow them successfully in your backyard garden. However, not all bell peppers are created equal. We've grown many different varieties with varying degrees of success. And I wanna give a few specific recommendations for bell pepper varieties to try growing. Our favorite so far has been the majestic red bell pepper. We grew it for the first time just last year, but we were so blown away by its impressive results. We grew it in containers and it gave us great yields on nice, strong, tall, sturdy plants. And more importantly, we didn't have any issues with disease, which is a common problem with bell pepper plants. So majestic bell might be a good choice for you if you live in the Northeast like we do, all the way down to the mid-Atlantic, maybe the Midwest as well. But if you live on the West Coast or if you live down in the subtropics around Florida or even Georgia, you might wanna try one of these two varieties, the Green Machine and Olympus bell peppers, both of which have been adapted to grow in those warmer climates. Thankfully, with bell peppers, you have a plethora of choices, so ask around, see what other growers in your area have had success with, and try those. One other variety I wanna mention before we move on from bell peppers is the Lesia pepper. We love this variety for its beautiful shape and its really delicious fruits. However, the plants are relatively small, the yields aren't quite as good as some of the bell varieties we've grown now, and we've had problems with blossom end rot almost every time we've tried to grow it. So if you're up for a challenge and you wanna try something more unique, try the Lesia. Next up is one of my all-time favorite peppers, period, the Jimmy Nardello. So this Italian frying pepper is an heirloom that was brought over actually to Connecticut where we live, and it grows so amazingly well in our climate. The plants are strong, sturdy, tall, lots of peppers off of each plant. In fact, they barely need any support. One central stake in the middle of the plant has been enough. I would say out of all of the peppers that I'll mention on this list, the Jimmy Nardello is my favorite for flavor. Its form factor may not be ideal for your needs. It's sort of got this big, elongated cayenne sort of shape to it, which is actually very impressive. Some of the peppers can be eight, 10 inches long, but clearly it's not ideal for stuffing. Instead, you can fry it, you can eat it fresh, you can roast them, you can dry them and make your own homemade paprika. Lots of ways to use Jimmy Nardellos. I love them, and we plan on growing them every year for the foreseeable future. And if you do want to grow Jimmy Nardellos, you might want to pick up one of our seed starting kits where you'll get three different custom colored pots, along with a custom tray, humidity dome, and seeds for three of our favorite pepper varieties, including the Jimmy Nardello. I'll leave links to where you can pick one of those up down below. Next up is probably the most versatile pepper on this list. There are just so many things you can do with it, and that would be the Carmen hybrid variety. This variety is based on the bullhorn pepper. They're nice, big, thick-walled red sweet peppers that grow on really vigorous plants. They do benefit from some staking, so I would at least recommend using a tomato cage around each plant. They can also grow to be very tall if you support them properly. One of our viewers actually sent in some pictures of their plant, which grew to almost seven feet tall. Really impressive results if you do it right. But the yield potential is through the roof. We got so many peppers off of our plants. And again, they're just so versatile. You can stuff these peppers, you can dehydrate them and make paprika, you can slice them and eat them fresh, you can fry them, roast them, even pickle them if you want. And the flavor, despite being a hybrid, is very good. To top it all off, very few problems with disease. We usually have issues with our sweet peppers, so it's nice to see healthy sweet pepper plants that don't wind up with blossom end rot or bacterial leaf spot. So the Carmen pepper is a great non-spicy variety. This next variety is both ornamental, beautiful, and practical, and that is the candy cane pepper. When the peppers are unripe, they have this beautiful striped appearance, white and green vertical stripes, which eventually ripen through to a rich red color. While these plants are on the smaller side, at least in our experience, they produce pretty good yields, and I really like the size of these peppers. They were between three and four inches tall by maybe two to three inches wide, you could stuff them, but in most cases, we were just eating them fresh, 
picking them right after they ripen to red. Delicious, sweet flavor, nice and crunchy, pretty thick walls, great as a bell pepper substitute or making a stuffed hors d'oeuvre or appetizer, something like that. And again, we had very little disease problems with this variety. So if you want a sweet pepper with ornamental value, but also practicality, maybe you want to grow it in containers, the candy cane variety might be for you. This next one has a little bit of a caveat because some of the peppers may have a little bit of heat to them, but a majority of them should be completely heat free. And that would be the Shishido pepper. This Japanese heirloom variety is again, one of my personal favorites to grow in the garden. The plants are nice and compact, usually around one and a half to maybe two feet tall, very bushy and loaded with fruits. You'll get more Shishidos than you know what to do with off of maybe just one or two plants. When it comes to using them, we almost always blister them or fry them over high heat. We actually have a quick video on how to do that. I'll leave that down below, but they're just so delicious on their own. All they need is a little bit of salt, maybe some sesame seeds, and it makes a great side. The next non-spicy pepper has a pretty unique form factor, and that would be the pimento or pimiento, also sometimes called the cherry pepper. This name obviously comes from its appearance. It's got an oversized cherry shape to it. And these are usually used for stuffing. You'll stuff them with cheese or you'll stuff the peppers into olives. There are many canned products on the market that utilize this pepper, but you can grow them yourself at home and use them to make your own stuffed peppers with whatever you want. Or you can just eat them fresh, of course. You can pickle them, maybe dry them and make your own paprika. Or my favorite way to use these peppers is to put them on skewers with other veggies and grill them up. As a bonus, if you do like your peppers a little bit spicy, there are cherry bomb peppers that have a little bit of heat around a jalapeno level. Now, before we get to the very last pepper on this list, I wanna give some honorable mentions, some peppers that might not be our very favorites, but definitely have a lot going for them. First up would be the natapeno pepper, or there's also the fooled you variety, which is kind of going for the same thing. And these are both non-spicy jalapenos. So if you like the shape and the form factor of a jalapeno, maybe you like to make your own poppers, but you can't handle the heat, then natapenos might be the perfect option. Personally, I don't really like the natapeno because I feel that jalapenos have the perfect amount of heat and there's some underlying flavor to the spicy varieties that's missing from the natapenos. But again, if you can't tolerate the heat, this is a great option. Another similar variety would be the habanada. You can see what they're going for with these names. This variety is essentially a habanero that doesn't have any heat to it. Again, I think the habanada is missing that underlying smokiness that comes along with the capsaicin in the peppers, and it really leaves me wanting some heat. But if you wanna try that unique floral flavor profile that you get from habaneros without the heat, the habanada is a great choice. One more honorable mention, or maybe a group of them, would be the chili chili or the medusa pepper and also the cayenne sweetness. These are all cayenne shaped or chili pepper shaped varieties that have no heat to them. Most of them are considered ornamental, but of course they are edible. And if you want that small chili pepper form factor without any of the heat, you can definitely find it. And finally, one of our all time favorite non-spicy peppers is the banana goddess. This is a hybrid banana variety that produces really tall, sturdy, strong plants with tons of peppers. It's just so impressive what these plants are capable of. They're disease resistant. They barely require any support, maybe just a stake in the middle and the plant will take care of the rest. If you want something that's really simple and carefree, you just want to throw a plant in the ground and get something out of it by the end of the season. This is probably a great choice. And thanks to their impressive size, they're usually eight to 10 inches long and at least two inches wide with nice thick walls. You can stuff these peppers, you can throw them in salads, you can pickle them, which is one of our favorite ways to do it. I'll leave a link down to our pickled banana pepper recipe below. They have a great crunchy texture. They're also resistant to bacterial leaf spot, which is a great thing up here in the Northeast. The only drawback is that the flavor isn't very powerful. It's definitely a more subdued flavor. So if you wanna eat them fresh, I recommend letting them ripen completely through to their red color before picking them. And again, if you're in the market for seed starting supplies, our new pepper starter kit is available on Bootstrap Farmer. We've got these beautiful 3.3 inch custom colored pots with a tray and humidity dome and three of our favorite pepper varieties. And for a limited time, if you get the two kit bundle, you'll get a significant discount. 
Check the links down below. So what did I miss? What are your favorite non-spicy pepper varieties? We've got a new season ahead of us. We'd love to try something new, so leave a comment down below with your favorite picks. Thanks so much for watching Pepper Geek, and I'll see you next time. In today's video, I'll talk about seven